and has a, a historical relationship with Macau. The mass market is really the retail market, the market that the, the international operators, you know, ourselves, Wen, Sands, um, and, and obviously Crown and Malco, we're, we're probably more comfortable with that because that's the environment we come from. So the, we, this, this uh, flywheel I kept talking about is as much about consumer confidence. They're getting used to us, they're accessing us, the distribution network, the travel agency network is getting, understands how to sell Macau and what's it about. That exactly applies at the premium end of the market. The notion between who is a VIP customer and who is a premium mass customer is that they're one and the same. They're high net worths. The fact of the matter, if we're in the West, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be calling them premium mass, we'd be calling them VIPs, but because the word VIP was already used in Macau, we needed a new title. And so now customers have choice. That's what competition does. It gives customers choice. And the critical point in terms of diversifying the cow is you've got to start by diversifying the gaming market. And that's really what the most important component is. There is no point putting all these non-gaming assets in if you don't actually diversify gaming. If gaming retained its single focus, which is through the, through the, the historical distribution network, we could never diversify because people only came to Macau to gamble. Once you've actually changed people's perspectives and you're moving into the leisure and entertainment segmentation of gaming, that's not to say that their disposable income and their capacity to spend is not as equal with, say, the higher end of the VIP market. That starts to allow you to move the whole pendulum of what Macau stands for, what it relates to, what you can afford to build. So they're all very, very, at the, at the top end of the market, they're consumers. We believe that we all deliver superior service and that we can provide customer relationships which will allow those higher net worth individuals to feel comfortable coming to Macau, stay with us and build that relationship. That's where the emerging premium mass comes from. And, but it also follows all the way down the, 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 the pyramid because each of us has a slightly different focus of where that fits in, where the portfolio is managed. And that's why the market's so strong, because there's actually, with the six of us, there really is an opportunity for us to, to have, a, have, a, have a clear market segmentation, even though we cross over with each other. And I think that's really, really powerful for Macau. And that's ultimately what's going to drive the diversification. Because if we're all chasing the same customer, it makes it much harder to diversify. But as we build our own perspectives, we actually grow this market. We move it in a much more dynamic way. Um to get thoughts from, from either of you on this premium mass. How, how much of it is borrowing from the VIP base from a traditional VIP junket perspective, number one, um, or is it just new expansion? Uh, number two, how cyclical is it gonna be? Um, there's a variety of reasons why VIP, is, as you all have already commented on, has been more volatile than sort of that sustained high growth of, uh, growth of mass. What about the premium mass? Is it gonna be a bit more susceptible, susceptible over time to economic cycles than sort of traditional mass market? Can you all address either you know, of those? The, the, the premium mass now is not dependent on credit, and, and that's really uh, gonna give it and it's going to make it sustainable for the foreseeable future. Uh, these are the profile that we have looked at for the premium mass customer is that they're business owners, they're slightly younger, they're not dependent on the junket operators, they're not dependent on us giving them credit, and there is an abundance of them and all they need is capacity, which sometimes we have, sometimes we don't. That will continue uh, to grow in my opinion. That customer uh, I think there are uh, millions of that customers to come in the next uh, few years. And as long as we provide them with accessibility and capacity, I think that market is going to be another extraordinary opportunity uh, for our industry. And, and you all have talked about optimizing your portfolio, you know, mass to premium mass, things along those lines. Can you know, shed a little bit more light? Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, just to finish up on that conversation, I, mean, I think the, the consumer, as Grant referenced, has become more sophisticated out of China. Um, and I think premium mass is almost, it's just offering the customer another choice. Um, and I think the Kotai resort model really enabled that because you know, the resorts can directly engage with these high net worth 
and upper middle class customers where you, know, you can offer them the full um, set of amenities on, on Kota. Um, in terms of optimization, are you referring to um, tables or? Tables, property, et cetera. Again, I mean, I agree with Grant. I mean, the, it, it's more reacting to the market trends. So, you know, the, there's a high level of uh, analytics, I think, all the operators engage in now. So it, it is about, you know, deploying the assets to the highest and, and best use. So I don't see it as operators dictating where the growth should come from. I see it as uh, operators being nimble in reacting to shifting market trends. Fair enough. I want to make, I've got to come and defend the peninsula. The peninsula can offer just as many opportunities to, to uh, premium mass. And the graph shows it. <laughs> These boys out here, sometimes they get carried away. The original Macau is in the peninsula. <laughs> I thought you were spending three billion on Kota. We are because we want to come join you and, and obviously share the love. <laughs> but, but the critical point, it's actually about Macau. It's not just about Kotai. It's actually about the success of the whole industry. And, and we all, of course, are going to be proud presenters of our own individual cases. But, but the fascinating thing is here is that Macau is, is obviously building its own presence in the market. And, and the critical point is the penetration in China is still incredibly low. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, the policy setting in terms of people coming to Macau seems to be quite clear. We do expect, and we have to acknowledge, and your question was, do you, is the potential for volatility in the premium mass market? The answer is yes. But the question is, as long as you have scale, and as long as you have mechanisms in place that manages that, and you keep on broadening the base, not, not overtaxing a small component, but continually attracting a wider and wider uh, audience, that's the greatest opportunity to reduce that volatility. So it would be wrong for us not to acknowledge it because we're in the gaming industry. But what we're saying is, is if you look at all the fundamentals, you look at the quality of the property, you look at the brand presence that Macau now has and that the individual properties are creating in that, you look at the penetration in the China market, 